collisions and damn those bumps in the road. Unfortunately, most of us hit them. And there are different ways of having a passion for something in life. Some people wear it on their sleeve. You see it, everybody knows about it. Others hold it deep inside and they don't let anybody know. And those people are quite frequently the ones who don't do anything about making it happen. One of the reasons I developed this speech is because I was one of those people who had no idea what I wanted to do in life. Did I have a passion? I didn't know. I really didn't. I, I'm a person who does a lot of things well, and it was very difficult for me to um, just single one out, single it out as the thing that I definitely wanted to accomplish in life. So I drifted along with jobs as a secretary and an office manager, and somewhere deep in down, I was hoping that I would find something that would really set me on fire, something that would make me want to do it with a passion. My sister, on the other hand, who's five and a half years younger than I am, was one of those people who always knew what she wanted to do. When she was a little kid and people would ask her, she'd say, oh, I'm going to be an artist. And they'd say, that's very nice, little girl, but what are you going to do to make money? And this little seven-year-old would look them in the eye and say, I'm going to be an artist. That's what I'll do to make money. And as she got older, that's exactly what she did. When she was 25 and had moved to Alaska at age 20, she became the art director for a large advertising agency in Alaska. Phyllis has done some very prestigious projects. Uh, she currently exhibits at a gallery in McMinnville, Oregon, and she has an art studio in her, in her house. She has held classes at the gallery. Uh, she's doing what she wanted. She's an artist. And the other thing that she does because she did have a second passion and that was writing, is that she and I write the Silver Sisters mysteries. So Phyllis had pursued her passion in every direction. I, on the other hand, didn't find one of the things I wanted to do until I was in my 30s. And at that point, I discovered I loved interior design. I got in touch with my creative spirit. I'd been kind of holding it down because I'm a right brain, left brain person and it seemed like the practicality and organization was kind of edging out the creativity. But when I discovered I liked interior design, at the time I had a husband, I had two little kids, I had a business I was running, and I wanted to be an interior designer. I like to do my homework, I like to know what I'm doing. So I pursued interior design classes at UCLA. And although I didn't finish my degree, I became a very accomplished designer. I wound up writing magazine articles for other designers. I was featured in design magazines. I was director of design for two residential development companies. And why? Because I found my passion. I found my creative spirit. I found what I wanted to do. However, being the person that I am, I find what I want to do very frequently. And I've reinvented myself so many times that it makes your head spin. My latest incarnation, that of writing novels, uh, giving speeches, motivational speeches, how-to speeches, workshops, uh, that happened pretty late in life. Um, the first book that I had published, which is behind me, over there, Corpse in the Soup, written with my sister. Uh, that was released after I started collecting Social Security. So that will not tell you how old I am, but it will give you an idea. I have never stopped learning. I have never stopped being in touch with my passion. I began speaking a few years back, and as I gave my writing workshops, people said to me, you are so inspirational, you should be doing motivational talks. Look at all the things you've done. So following along with that device, I've developed a few motivational speeches. This is one of them. And another one is called Pump Up Your Personality because people need to be able to know who you are.
I go through many tips, many stories in my presentation, and it's definitely not just about me because that would be terribly egotistical, don't you think? I like to use examples like, for instance, Stephen Hawkins. Look at the obstacles that man had to climb, and yet look what he's done with his life. Then on the other hand, I use one of my uncles by marriage, a man who was so brilliant he could have qualified for Mensa, but never did anything with his brilliance. He instead became a hypochondriac, underachiever. He liked to complain about his ailments, and he would always tell you that he didn't get to go to college because he went to work and put his sister through college. But the man didn't get married till he was 40, had no children, very few responsibilities. And does the words night school sound like something? He could have certainly pursued his passion. He just chose not to. This man could sit down and discuss engineering, electronics, science with people with advanced degrees, and they never knew that he didn't have a degree. That's how brilliant he was. And what a waste not to do anything with that. I have a friend who lost his arm to cancer when he was 11 years old. Not only his arm, but his shoulder as well. Did he sit back and say, oh, well, now that I've done that, I, now that that's happened to me, my life is in the toilet, I can't do anything. No, he didn't do that. He pursued a passion that he found when he was going to college. He became one of the top equestrian vaulting coaches in the nation, which is a two-armed sport. He has been the mentor to thousands of disabled children throughout his life because he and his wife have a passion and the obstacles don't matter. So I invite you to ask for more information about this presentation. It can be geared to corporations, to organizations, groups. Just get in touch with me and I'll be happy to discuss what I can do for you.